Hey students, now let us learn the next part of the first lesson. It is 1.3 Sexual Reproduction in Plants. So in the previous classes we have learned about the reproduction in the lower plants like algae, bryophytes, etc. Today we shall deal with the sexual reproduction in them. So sexual reproduction involves two important processes. They are gametogenesis and fertilization. What is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is the production of gametes by the individual plant. What is fertilization? Fertilization is the fusion of these gametes to form the embryo. So sexual reproduction in lower plants like algae and bryophytes, they produce either motile or non-motile gametes. And the fusion of these gametes take place externally. Externally means outside the body of the plant. Whereas in the higher plants, the fusion of the gametes take place internally, inside the body of the plant. So there are three types of this fusion. Fusion of gametes, they are isogamy, anisogamy and oogamy. The explanation of this you have already learned in 11th standard. Let me recall for your memory. So what is isogamy? Isogamy is the fusion of the gametes which are morphologically, physiologically similar. What is anisogamy? Anisogamy is the fusion of the gametes which are either morphologically or physiologically dissimilar. Only in one way they will be similar. Whereas what is oogamy? So it is a fusion of the gametes which are morphologically as well as physiologically dissimilar. So according to the type of species, either any one of this will be taking place for the sexual reproduction. Now let us get into the flower. So flower, what is a flower? The flower is viewed in multidimensional perspective. So it is an inspirational tool for the poets for writing the poems. It becomes a decorative material for celebration. In Tamil literature, they have divided the land into five types, denoted by the different types of flowers, you know, Kurunji, Mullai, Neidal, Pale, etc. And even flags of some countries are also embedded with flowers. So, according to a morphologist, what is a flower? According to morphologist, a flower is a highly condensed shoot meant for reproduction. So, it is a modified shoot which is meant for reproduction. What is shoot? You know, the plant body can be divided into root and shoot. The part below the soil is root and above the soil is called as shoot. The highly condensed shoot which is meant for reproduction is called the flower. A flower possesses four words. We have learned already in the 10th standard and in 11th standard also. So, what are the four words of the flower? Calyx. Corolla, Andrisium, and Gynesium. So, what is Calyx and Corolla? They both are called as non essential. They are non essential worlds of the flower. Whereas the next two are called as essential worlds. So, because, so andrisium produces the male gamete and gynesium produces the female gametes. What are the structures of the andrisium and gynesium? So, andrisium consists of stamens, whereas the gynesium consists of corpel. And here, we are going to discuss about the pre-fertilization, fertilization and post-fertilization of these gametes in this lesson. See the pre-fertilization so there are hormonal and structural changes that happens in the plant leads to the differentiation of the cells to develop the flower from the flower primordial so in male it is the andrisium andrisium consists of stamen as we know what are the structures of stamen anther and filament so this is the filament and this is the anther and the anther produces the pollen which becomes the gametophyte now let us see the development of anther development of the anther 
starts with the homogeneous mass of cells surrounded by an epidermis so during its development the anther assumes four lobed structure so in each lobe a row of few cells that cells called hypodermal cells the cells which are inside the epidermis we call them as hypodermal cells so these cells become enlarged with conspicuous nucleus this orange colored cells are called as archisporial cells archisporium the hypodermal cells get specialized enlarged to form the archisporial cells and these cells they function as the archisporium okay this archisporial cells divide periclinally so periclinally means uh, inside this uh, epidermis so if it divides like this in towards the epidermis parallel to the epidermal layer then we call it as periclinal division so it divides periclinal division to form two cells the cell which is towards the epidermis is called as parietal cell and the cell towards the uh, center it is called as primary sporogenous cells now this primary parietal cells resulting from the first division will undergo continuous division many uh, divisions a series of division periclinally as well as anticlinal anticlinal this is periclinal division this is anticlinal division periclinally anticlinal division it undergoes and the, this primary parietal cells uh, becomes two to five layers of anther wall which composed of three layers so outer epidermis inner to the epidermis we call it as endothelium then you will have the middle layer and inner to the middle layer you will have the tapetum cells what is microsporogenesis so there are many stages involved in the formation of the haploid microspores from the diploid microspore mother cells so this microspore mother cells has to undergo meiosis meiotic division to form four haploid microspore and this is what is called as microsporogenesis the primary sporogenous cell may undergo few division to form the sporogenous tissue so in the last generation of the sporogenous tissue will function as the microspore mother cell and this microspore mother cell will undergo meiotic division so meiotically it will divide to form four haploid microspores and we call this as the microspore tetrad and this uh, haploid microspores will remain free in the uh, locule the cavity which is uh, in the center of the four lobes we call them as locule they will remain free in the locule and that microspores only will develop into the pollen grains so the stages in the development it, it is nicely shown in this uh, diagram you can see and refer the diagram in your book another structure called pollinium what is pollinium in some plants this microspores which are developed from the anther will remain held together they will be remaining together and this structure is called as pollinium so pollinium is seen in uh, callotropis example callotropis you know what is callotropis it is erkan jedi this pollinia are attached to a clamp like structure which is sticky Uh, this structure is called together as corpusculum so the pollinia the are attached to a clamp like sticky structure which is called as corpusculum and from that corpusculum you can see the uh, thread like filamentous structure arising to each of the pollinium and this is what is called as retinaculum and this whole structure will be looking like a inverted y shaped structure and this is what is called as translator and this is the structure of pollinium which is seen in callotropis let's learn the ts of mature anther so ts of mature anther reveals the presence of the anther cavity surrounded by the anther wall so it is bilobed and each lobe will be having two theca to two theca it is said to be dithecus if it is single theca then we call it as monothecus so a typical anther is tetrasporangiate so we have four locule inside and so it is called as four cavities and so it is called as tetrasporangiate the ts of the mature anther reveals the following structure so first one is called anther wall 
second one is anther cavity and third one is connective tissue so anther wall this is anther wall the second one is anther cavity and this these are the connective tissue which connects the sporangium now anther wall so anther wall consists of the following structures the first one outermost is the epidermis so epidermis is a single layer by the repeated anticlinal division i have already explained what is anticlinal so this is the anticlinal by repeated anticlinal division so epidermis will get enlarged with the enlargement of the anther next layer is called the endothecium so it is generally single layered and it's radially it is radially elongated so what do you mean by radially elongated if this is the epidermis the inner layer which is endothecium will be radially elongated like like this so radially elongated and the inner tangential wall and the radial wall will be thickened so because of the accumulation of the alpha cellulose so sometimes it is also lignified lignin also will get settled in the radial and the inner tangential wall making these cells as hygroscopic cells what is hygroscopic cells they can absorb the water and enlarge in size that is hygroscopic in some of the plants like aquatic plants saprophyte and cleistogamous extreme parasitic plants this endothecial differentiation will not be present is absent so aquatic plants are plants that live in water already they are living in water it is having enough amount of water in each cell so it need not have to enlarge absorbing the water and the same way saprophytes which depend on the dead and decay matter cleistogamous plants are which the flowers will not be opening for the pollination pollination is need not uh, take place because all will be self pollinating plants and extreme parasites also does not need the uh, transfer of pollen grains and so they will not be having this endothecial differentiation it will be absent and what is stomium so stomium is the region where the two thecal thecal region will be joining this is a stomial region the cells along the junction of the two sporangium of the anther low black this here this thickening will be absent and this region will not be hygroscopic this thickening is absent and this region is called a stomium so this region along with the hygroscopic nature of the endothecium helps in the dehiscence of the anther at the time of maturity so uh, here the endothecium will have the thickening and here is the stomium so because of the enlargement of the cells in the uh, uh, hygroscopic cells of this uh, endothecium it will pull and break up the anther wall at the region called stomium to liberate the pollens at the time of maturity comes the middle layer middle layer there are two to three layers so middle layer is generally epimeral epimeral they will not be in the same form they will get disintegrate or get crushed at the time of maturity so inner to the middle layer comes the tapetum which is very very important it is the innermost layer of the anther wall so it attains its maximum development at the stage of tetrad stage of microsporogenesis and it is derived partly from the connective tissue and partly from the lining of the anther locule so it is dual in origin the epitome is dual in origin because it is partly derived from the peripheral wall of the anther wall as well as partly from the connective tissue and so it is dual in origin it nourishes the developing sporogenous tissue so microspore mother cells and microspores are nourished by this tapetum so normally they are un the cells of the tapetum are uninucleate sometimes they become they have more than one nucleus and the nucleus may also become polyploid in condition so they contribute the tapetal cells contribute the wall material such as uh, sporopollenin pollen kit trifine 
and number of proteins and these uh, substances these uh, wall material are responsible for controlling the incompatibility reaction so what is this incompatibility reaction so when the pollen um, comes and settle on the stigma of another flower the um, pollen grain must be able to produce a pollen tube to penetrate through the style into the ovary and it has to fertilize the ovule if it is not taking place we call it as incompatibility it happens only in the say of the same species so the incompatibility reaction is controlled by the production of these substances which is contributed by the tapetal cells there are two types of uh, tapetum found in the many plants the first one is called as secretory so secretory tapetum is otherwise called as parietal glandular and cellular in which the tapetal cells will retain their original position as well as their integrity but they will just nourish them developing microscope microspore so the cells will not be get changed they will not be changing in their uh, morphology or physiology but they nourish the developing microspores whereas the second one is called as invasive so invasive uh, tapetum is otherwise called as periplasmodial here the cells lose their inner tangential and the radial wall and the protoplasm of all the cells will be united to form uh, collases they say collases to form the peri plasmodium so this is these are the two different types of uh, tapetum which are found in different species so next let us learn the functions of tapetum the first function as we have already seen it gives the nourishment to the developing microspore second one it contributes a substance called sporopollenin through the ubish bodies and this plays a very important role in the form of pollen wall formation the third uh, function of it is uh, the pollen kit material is also contributed by this tapetal cells and this only forms the uh, pollen surface material of the pollen pollen grains then the fourth function is that the exine protein you know that pollen grain will have the two uh, walls um, and which is called as intine and exine the exine will have a certain protein which is responsible for the rejection re uh, reaction of the stigma that is present in the exine cavity and this is also contributed by the uh, proteins which are derived from the tapetal cells two structures of the mature anther other than anther wall are the anther cavity and the connective tissue so anther cavity as we know it is present in the center of the anther so it is filled with microspores at the younger stage of anther and with pollen grains at its maturity so pollen grains or microspores are formed by the meiotic division of microspore mother cells and they are haploid in nature next is the connective tissue connective tissue it is present in between the lobes and this connective tissue will have the vascular tissue this is the vascular tissue and it contributes the food and the nourishment through the inner tapetal cells this microspores and pollen grains so microspores are the immediate product of the microspore mother cell through meiotic division whereas the pollen grains are derived from this microspores so microspores have protoplasts surrounded by the cell wall it will be developed as the pollen grain then protoplasts consist of dense cytoplasm with centrally located nucleus so and the wall will be differentiated into two different types that is intine and exine so inner wall is called as intine and the outer wall is called as exine so inner wall is made up of substances like pectin hemicellulose cellulose callose and certain types of proteins whereas the exine wall is thicker thicker than the uh, intine and it is made up of cellulose spore pollenin and pollen kit so this uh, on the exine wall exine wall is not uniform it is having ups and downs in certain areas it is thin and in certain areas it is 
thick the thin areas which are small and round call it as germ pores sometimes these um, germ pores are sometimes elongated and they are called as uh, furrows so on the surface of the pollen grain it is generally uh, different it is not similar same in every species of the plant so this is because of the accumulation of the substance called sporopollenin sporopollenin is generally absent in the case of germ pores so the surface of the exine is either smooth or sculpted in various patterns like rod like grooved warty uh, punctuate etc the sculpturing pattern um, the, through this we are able to differentiate the different species and it is helpful for the identification and classification of the plants also in the same way the shape of the pollen grain also varies from species to species it may be globose ellipsoid fusiform lobed or angular crescent shaped etc so globose means round like this ellipsoid means elliptical shape fusiform like this uh, ends will be tapering and middle will be enlarged lobed lobed like this uh, as well as angular angular in the case of like um, sharp ends uh, angular and crescent shape crescent this is a crescent shape like the different varied shape they take same way the size also varies from 10 micrometer to 200 micrometer so 10 micrometer it is present example myosotis is the example for this whereas 200 micrometer it is present in the families of cucurbitaceae and uh, nectarginaceae so the wall material we call sporopollenin is very very important it has a very important role to play it is uh, contributed uh, both by the uh, pollen cytoplasm as well as the tapetum so it is derived from the substance called carotenoid and it gives the resistant uh, to the pollen physically biological decomposition also so it helps to withstand high temperature resistant against strong acid alkali enzyme action so nothing will affect the pollen grains because of the presence of the uh, sporopollenin it also preserves the pollen for long period in the case of fossils fossil deposit sporopollenin protects the pollen due during the during the journey from the anther to the stigma during pollination so pollen kit is the next uh, substance which is found on the surface of the uh, pollen grain which is also derived by the tapetum which is yellow in color or orange in color and it is made up of carotenoid and flavonoids it is a oily uh, layer formed on, formed on the surface of the exine is it will protect the pollen from the damage due to uv radiation and it also helps in the attraction of the insects we also learn about palynology palynology is nothing but the study of pollen grains it helps to identify the distribution of coal and locate uh, even the oil fields underground it uh, also reflects the vegetative area of a surface so what type of trees plants vegetation or forest is found in a particular region also is identified through the study of pollen grains next comes the cryo preservation cryo preservation is nothing but uh, storing or preserving the pollen grains in the viable condition for a long time and it is done by keeping them in the liquid nitrogen in minus 196 degree celsius uh, by which it can be kept uh, in a very viable state and uh, it can also be uh, utilized for producing uh, crops important crops for breeding programs etc then comes the pol bee pollen so bee pollen is also a natural substance which is obtained from the flowers which contains high protein carbohydrates and trace amount of vitamins and minerals and it is uh, given in a form of even tablet pollen tablets and syrups which gives a dietary supplement for the uh, people who need like give this bee pollen to increase their ability and the capacity uh, and it also helps in the healing of the wounds caused by the burn etc so study of honey pollen is called as melitopalynology microspores uh, are the first male gametophyte of the plant and it is haploid in nature the development of the gametophyte will be taking place when while they are still in the microsporangium of the anther 
so the first the nucleus of the microspore will divide into two a uh, mitotic division will take place and it will divide into two to form unequal cells two unequal cells the one cell is called as um, vegetative cell another one is called as generative cells at this two cell stage only the pollen will be liberated from the anther in some plants the generated generative cells will again undergo one more division to form uh, two male cells Uh, two gamete gamete cells then it will be reaching the uh, sigma of the flower for pollinate during pollination uh, 60% of angiosperm uh, the pollen is liberated in the two cell stage for the development of the uh, pollen grain will be happening on the stigma by absorbing the water or moisture from the stigma they will swell and the intain will grow into the pollen tube and it will pierce through the exine germ pore of the exine and it will be growing as a pollen tube in two cell stage generative cells will be dividing in the pollen tube into two male cells before it reaches the embryo sac of the ovary